Welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to the course uh, Marketing Research and Analysis 2. First we will start with hypothesis and research question. You can take it other way around. So, research question and hypothesis whatever. So, once we uh, although we have done it in the uh, first session also first uh, you know course first part of the course, but here again I want to start from here. So, that I will tell you how to develop the hypothesis and what factors what things you should be considering while developing a hypothesis and testing the hypothesis right. Then uh, after that comes a very very important part many a times I have seen students and researchers they collect data, but then they do not collect it in the right way and then during the analysis it becomes a very very tough task to you know interpret them and even properly uh, uh, you know analyze them. So, for that reason what I have thought is one uh, session I will be spending entirely on how, what is how to bring the data or how to uh, you know bring in the data how the researcher should uh, collect the data and how they should be putting it in the software or coding them and uh, editing them and all these things. And finally, the most important part which everybody miss misses is that how do I prepare my data? Is my data in the right format to be analyzed or not? You will see that many a times to avoid the you know we take it as a headache and a as a pain to avoid that what we do is we try to force fit and forcefully go across with the data that is available in our hand that is not right that is dangerous in fact. What you do is in by doing that because a machine does not understand the human behavior it will give you some result, but then the result is is completely maybe it could be wrong because after all you are the person you are the researchers who will be uh, interpreting them. So, if your data is correct and it has been cleaned it has been you know uh, put to size then those datas are the best data and they should be then carried on for further analysis. So, that is where I will spend some time to uh, you know help you out all researchers to how to clean the data and how what should you keep in mind while collecting the data. Then I will get, get into the test of hypothesis. So, because every researcher at the end of the day either needs an answer for a question or it wants to test an assumption or a you know or a you know some kind of a belief or a some kind of a you know statement that it has made. Uh, so, it wants to test it whether it is true or not in the market. So, we will be uh, testing those hypotheses with several uh, techniques available uh, to us. Then we get into the most you know the largest part of the uh, study or this course is the data analysis techniques here as a matter of concern I will try to tell you all the different techniques when you should use and why you should use with that with addition I will tell you which technique what should be the conditions you should be keeping in mind how you should be avoiding a mistake and you should be doing it in the right way. Okay. So, uh, univariate data analysis, bivariate data analysis, multivariate data analysis finally, it is they are all data analysis only right. So, only condition is there is one variable two or more variables. So, there are different tests which will be I will be explaining I have just written in a bracket if you uh, can see for example, the T uh, Z F right. So, these things MANOVA, ANCOVA right, MANCOVA regression in regression again simple regression multiple regression suppose there is a dummy variable then what dummy variable dummy variable coded regression logistic regression again in logistic regression simple and multinomial uh, logistic regression then discriminant analysis multiple discriminant analysis factor exploratory factor analysis cluster analysis right multidimensional scaling and SCM which is I have found I have seen that I, I, I several I have conducted several workshops on uh, data analysis and there has been always a demand uh, for uh, from people and researchers they find that they are confused with uh, things like structural equation modeling confirmatory factor analysis. So, mediator moderator effects and all. 
So, these things I will try to uh, clear it as much as possible on uh, within my limitations my capability. So, and I hope uh, that will help you uh, drastically uh, I will try to make it as clear as possible. So, that finally, you interpret and write your results out result outputs very clearly. So, uh, let me begin. So, I think this is what my content is all about and I hope I uh, make it as clear as possible for you right. So, let us move now. So, to the next slide. So, let us start with this research question right. So, what is the research question? So, before we go to the research question I want to show you something right. Look at this photo. This is a very popular photo we all have seen and we know about it. This apple when it fell on uh, Newton's head Newton asked a question why did the apple fall right. Why did not the apple fall somewhere else why did uh, why did it fall directly on the ground right. So, that was the birth of a research question and that was from there evolved the gravitational theory and many other theories. So, connected to the gravitational one. So, the point is the human mind is always concerned is always thinking is is uh, you know uh, is is uh, is vibrant and it is continuously thinking something ki why did it happen why it did happen in this way only why not some other way will the marketers strategy work will it not work will it work because of some other effects or is it directly whatever he is doing will it be you know the result will be an output of the variables or whether have we missed some variables could there are several things that keeps us uh, you know always comes to our mind. So, let us go back. So, what is a research question is a refined statement of the specific components of the research problem as you can see each component of the problem may have to be broken down into sub components or research question that means if you look at this. So, this is a research problem right. So, this research problem once you have identified then this may give to several research questions right may be one two sub components sub research questions for get you know uh, analyzing or understanding these research questions you need information specific information. So, then you start collecting information right. So, this is how it goes ok. So, research question asks what specific information is required with respect to the problem components many a times it happens why this is important to be discussed. Researchers ha, uh, get into a flow or they get diverted they start uh, you know vacillating from their major objective or main objective and they go into areas which are maybe close to their research topics, but that is not their final concern or that is not their major objective. So, it is very natural to be to get you know deviated from uh, because of a flow of your thought process, but that is not uh, you have to be careful in that. So, you should not be deviating too far as you know in mathematics also we say there is a standard deviation there has to be a range you if it is too much then it is not good right. So, slight deviation is ok and it is maybe it is required also sometimes, but too much of a deviation is also bad and so that is why you need to understand from your problem statement ki what are the research questions I need and what are the major research questions. I cannot go on adding more and more research questions because there is a limitation and that is not fitting to my maybe objective of study. The formulation of research questions should be guided by not only by the problem definition, but by the theoretical framework and the analytical model. Now, what is that theoretical framework let us say. Now, you have studied several theoretical frameworks for example, they say the we say why do fans behave or why do fans you know run after or try to do something that is what uh, that is you know what their role models are doing right. For example, if somebody is a big fan of let us say um, uh, I would say let us say Tom Cruise. So, you try to do something that Tom Cruise does right. So, the point is or you are a follower of John Nash then maybe you are a scientific uh, you know person you a scientific in mind. So, then you would like to do behave and try to do something like uh, John Nash. So, the question is or try to get into his research works and try to do more into that. So, the question is the theoretical framework that comes in here is called basking in reflected glory. So, we say 
that person is is following certain kind of a framework maybe he is following certain kind of a theoretical model. So, and then it is it can be also added with some analytical models be it a verbal model be it a mathematical model or anything right. So, how does he actually think this is nothing but a you can understand in this way it is like a flow chart it is a verbal representation it is a visual representation not verbal uh, it is a visual representation ok. So, as I said research problem leads to research questions and research questions need specific information to get answered ok. Let us come to the a marketing research problem ok. So, uh, because this course is marketing research and analysis. So, you know we need to be very clear that marketing research is completely or is very much affected or related to the consumer and the consumer behavior and the, the buyer behavior, the supplier behavior basically human behavior to be very honest uh, in, in the terms of a parallels of a market right. Uh, we are not talking about psychology in terms of let us say some other uh, uh, you know conditions, but in terms of the market and economy at large. So, two things are there either it is a living organism or it is a non living organism. If it is a non living organism it is a machine right. So, a machine's behavior is different. So, you do experiments in the lab, but here our object of study is humans and maybe living organisms right. So, suppose uh, you are making a product for a for your pets dogs and something then maybe you have to understand the how, what dogs eat and what do they like. Suppose you are making something from for uh, women then you have to understand what women want if you are doing something for uh, men let us say elderly men then you have to say what do elderly men like or what do they want what is what are the products that can be made for them how do they behave and what point of time do they buy why do they buy only at this point of time and why not some other uh, way. So, all these questions are pertaining to the demographic or the the, the scope the, 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 the subject of reference right. So, <coughs> let us take this example. So, a department store needs to determine the relative strength and weakness of it against its competitors right with respect to factors that influence store loyalty. That means, a store is interested in understanding that against its competitors when it compares against its competitors what are the relative strengths and weaknesses that influence store loyalty store patronage or store loyalty right. So, there the following question is what is the demographic and psychographic profile they are important right. So, who are these people right and uh, what is the psychological behavior the psychographic profile of the customers of the store right does it differ from the profile of customers of competing stores. The people who are com coming to visit my store are they different from the people who are visiting the competitors stores are we is, uh, there is, is there a significant difference because the word significance I will be using repeatedly and mathematically it have makes a sense because otherwise things become a chance if it is not significant then it is a chance. So, something that happens out of chance is something uh, is uh, is of no importance to you or me because then we cannot prove it we cannot claim that it will happen again and again and there is no external validity uh, con uh, connected to it. So, the point here is that comes is does it differ is it statistically uh, significant is there a significant difference between the customers uh, profiles between the ones who are coming to us and the ones who are going to our competitors right. Okay. So, the context of psychological characteristics example of research questions. So, a few of them let us see the first question says do customers exhibit store loyalty do customers exhibit store loyalty that means given a chance suppose some competitive uh, competing you know store uh, my competitor let us say brings in a new, new uh, loyalty scheme or a promotional scheme not loyalty promotional scheme let us say would the or decreases its price whatever would the customer stay with me or would my customer loyal customer whom I am thinking to be considering to be loyal they would move away. Are customers heavy users of credit are they do they want to buy things only in credit if yes and suppose I am a uh, store who is not giving credit credit facility then maybe I will get affected correct. Are they more conscious of personal appearance as compared to the customers of competing are the people who are coming to my store let us say I am XYZ store and those who are coming to my store are they 
more concerned about their appearance how do they look and uh, you know and what is uh, their um, you know the physical appearance let us say right what kind of dresses are they putting on. So, are they conscious we will need to see because these things are very critical very important to differentiate your customers ok. Do customers combine shopping with eating out? So, is this this is like something preparing a cluster right. So, are you trying to we are trying to uh, combine shopping with eating habits uh, some would let us say yes people who are shopping that they, they automatically come to shop because they want to uh, at the end of the day they want to go to the nearest eating joint and have something. Maybe maybe they are coming to shopping just because they want to uh, you know take a uh, you know uh, uh, go to those uh, eating joints and enjoy themselves entertain themselves right. So, we need to understand the psychological behavior until unless we understand these behaviors of people it is very difficult to formulate any strategy in terms of product in terms of uh, price in terms of the availability the place or even how to attract them the promotion right even what to how to package. So, the promotion I would take it for the moment into the, the packaging into promotion only. So, maybe. So, this is where it becomes uh, very important. So, after uh, you have understood a research question that means something that was not there. So, you uh, as I said in my first course or if you want you can uh, look at my NP, uh, NPTEL's first course the marketing research analysis one where I had explained how research question is connected with an exploration it is an exploratory part is a part of the exploratory research you are exploring something what is beyond the galaxy I do not know. So, I do not have an answer, but there is something called a hypothesis which comes when you have certain knowledge about the subject. So, research questions are further refined into one or more hypothesis. So, a hypothesis generates when the researcher has at least certain idea some idea about the object of reference or the object or the or the you know the, uh, the subject of the study right. So, it is nothing but a tentative statement about relationships between two or more variables as stipulated by the theoretical framework right or the analytical model. So, for example, let us say I would say that if I uh, if if I let us say uh, release a particular product during a particular time period of the year it will become a grand success. Now, so time and the type of product now those two variables are correlated that means I mean to say right. So, my hypothesis is that the time of uh, you know launching the product makes an impact on the rate of success of the product. So, this is an hypothesis it could be true it might not be true. Okay. Often a hypothesis is a possible answer to the research question yes obviously. So, when uh, maybe when Newton developed the first time he asked the research question. So, after that uh, after asking the research question he must have done some study and then he came he uh, his scope of study increased and his his research in that area increased and he started learning more about the subject maybe he himself and his peers and all. And finally, what happened was they could come to certain kind of a, uh, you know a statements that they developed ki maybe it is happening because of this reason. So, once the knowledge base improved then slide then they started getting into this developing of hypothesis ok. Example of a hypothesis. So, the research question first let us uh, this is the research question do this is the research question RQ is the research question do customers exhibit store loyalty is the research question. Now, what are the connecting hypothesis? So, the customers the following hypothesis are customers H 1 customers who are store loyal are less knowledgeable about the shopping environment. <coughs> what is the first hypothesis? The customers who are store loyal are less knowledgeable about the shopping environment that means loyal customers are not aware about or not concerned about the shopping environment they are not bothered about it. Second store loyal customers are more risk averse than they then are non loyal customers. So, the loyal customers are more risk averse they uh, they would avoid risk. So, maybe that is the reason they are they become loyal they do not want to go to try out some other uh, stores ok. 
So, that is these are some of the uh, uh, you know uh, hypothesis that the store uh, a, let us say a large store let us say um, like for example, Walmart or anybody can develop connecting to the research question ki do customers exhibit uh, store loyalty or is it because of the hypothesis which says like they are risk averse or they have no knowledge or less knowledge. So, these are the hypothesis that is connected. Okay. So, hypothesis are statements of relationships or propositions rather than merely questions to which answers are sought as it is written. So, how is it different let us see research question says it is interrogative in nature okay. exploratory as I said it is trying to find out there is a there is an urge to learn and I do not know anything about the subject right. Hypothesis on the other hand is conclusive or declarative in nature and cannot be and can sorry and can be empirically tested. So, I have some basic knowledge and now I want to some uh, you know if not directly the same product or same service may be something similar or close to that. Okay. So, it can be empirically tested and it is a part of the conclusive research. Again I uh, tell you ki this is hypothesis is mostly into the conclusive research side which considers uh, which contains two parts the descriptive research and the causal research. The descriptive research is something where you are basically testing a hypothesis in the condition of a market or a service uh, in the condition of a market in economic uh, you know conditions and in the, uh, the causal research is something where we just try to see a cause and effect action reaction. So, cause effect. So, those two conditions are conclusive researches you are testing the hypothesis and trying to prove it. Second when you come to research question refined these are the research refined statements of the specific components of the problems these are the refined statements of the specific components of the problems and helps in developing hypothesis right. Research question helps in the development of the hypothesis. On the other hand hypothesis is an unproven statement or proposition about a factor or a phenomena that is of interest to the researcher. It is unproven there is some knowledge so the researcher develops a hypothesis and tests it. Okay. What are the sources of hypothesis? How do you develop a hypothesis? As I said you need to have some knowledge right. So, th there are theoretical or conceptual frameworks. So, as I said there could be a theoretical framework or there is some kind of a you find a connecting uh, you know uh, statement or some kind of a you know uh, uh, connection right. So, when you uh, when you can uh, uh, have such kind of a knowledge ki let us say A affects B and B affects C. So, I say A also affects C indirectly right. Academic literature obviously, when you uh, go through literature and surveys and you see that academic literature helps a lot in also generating knowledge and once you have the knowledge you try to test this knowledge in form of a hypothesis. Third real life experiences maybe I have not studied anything, but when I went to the market I found very interesting one behavior that people are interested in buying colorful uh, let us say dolls or children's let us say are interested in buying only colorful dolls. Right. So, when I am saying children's are buying interested in buying colorful dolls, so that is a real life experience which I have not neither studied anywhere or I have no clue. So, I saw maybe I went to the store uh, 10 different times differently and each time I went to buy for my child let us say, let's say some doll and I saw that she is getting attracted to a colorful doll colorful and chubby doll. One time I thought it is only because not only colorful it is very cute looking doll. Second time I saw somebody not only my child, but some other children also there they were again buying a uh, let us say a um, uh, uh, colorful doll which was not so chubby maybe right. So, third time and fourth time when I continuously observed I found that more than the chubbiness or cute lookingness of the doll it is the uh, color that has been significantly constant in all the time. Now, I want to see through a research ki whether the kind of color used for the dolls are they the reasons for the attracting the children's. So, that is what I am thinking previous researchers. So, previous researchers have been done in some area on, on a relating area. Now, uh, when I when I go through it I would uh, feel ki well if this has happened let us say in x y x country let us say the study was done in some let us say x country.
can I see and test ki because we are all humans may be it is uh, Asia or Europe or uh, America or uh, Africa it does not matter they are all humans. Yes, there are differences in culture and tradition, but humans after all right. So, if it has happened possibly in let us say Africa will it be the same uh, can I say that it would also happen similarly in India. So, that is the question. So, I am asking. So, looking at the previous researches we have done in Africa or Europe or America I am trying to see can it be repeated to the Asian uh, counterpart. So, this is some sources ok. Will you talk about a, a good hypothesis right. So, what is a good hypothesis? A good hypothesis has got certain features as you can see. So, all this have to be there first it should be relevant your study should be relevant right. That means, you as I said you are not going too much you are not getting deviated out of your topic you are not going too far out of your topic kindly be very uh, very very um, clear on this and be very careful because we have a tendency uh, because you see today nowadays most of the researchers are applied and there is a time limit to research and you cannot uh, just carry on for uh, ever. Right. So, the relevancy of the study is very important right. If you take in such kind of hypothesis or research questions which may not be very much directly related to you and you are spending time then maybe 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 although knowledge never goes waste, but it could be a waste of your time for that particular condition. Testability can I test it is it possible within my limitation limited resources can I test it or not. Consistency a good hypothesis should give a consistent you know after testing a consistent result. So, there needs to be consistency in my approach if I am developing if I am developing a good hypothesis and someone else is developing hypothesis on the same area the hypothesis needs to be consistent in nature right. Conceptual clarity very very vital be when you develop a hypothesis you only should develop one hypothesis or you can, but just sometimes we do not uh, keep uh, uh, you know heed to that you need to have a very strong theoretical foundation. So, there is a conceptual clarity objectivity as I said you have to be focused what is the objective of your study specific again what specific information do I need to carry on this study right. So, this all these things should be clear purposiveness and it should be simple. So, these things some of them you may club it also if you feel uh, let us say ki they are too thinly distributed you may club and to make it into 2, 3 groups no issues, but uh, you know into that. But these are the things that a good hypothesis should have at least it should have a very strong conceptual foundation that means, your theoretical framework you know the knowledge some you have knowledge about it and it could be it should be relevant it should be testable right. And obviously, you should not you should avoid complex ones right. So, these are some of the things that you should keep in mind. Well, we talked about research questions and hypothesis and framing, uh, framing. In the next session also, I will continue with hypothesis. Maybe one or two sessions I'll uh, spend on hypothesis, and then we will get into the data part. So, I hope uh, it was clear. And uh, thank you again for supporting me and uh, you know, uh, look, uh, watching my you know uh, course and uh, taking this course as a part of your career. Uh, thank you again, and I wish you all the luck. Thank you so much.